The brand new expansion for Lotro Update 38, The Corsairs of Umbar, has been out for almost a week now. And in this video, we're going to talk about how the expansion has gone. And while there are definitely positives with this expansion, there are definitely a lot of negative feedback as well. So in this video, we're going to mainly focus on the negatives and why I think the Corsairs of Umbar expansion so far is not good enough. Now let's start off by looking at the pre-order pages and looking at what we were promised. So a brand new expansion, Corsairs of Umbar, blah, blah, blah. Yes, exciting story, exciting things are happening. This is all good and well. Some nice background imagery of the new areas. Key features, let's look at this. So obviously find your sea legs with the Mariner. A Mariner, brand new class, and this class, in my opinion, really well done. Excellent class work. I don't think anyone has any complaints about the Mariner, but the Mariner class is included in every single bundle that you buy. So this is expected to be a decent class. And like I've said, the class has been very well received. Really good job on the Mariner class. Explore the shores of Umbar. Yes, there's new areas and generally the landscape, the questing and everything is great. Fight fears, new enemies. Yep, there's new enemies. Like I said, the landscape, everything looks great, is great. People don't generally complain about this. Over 350 unique quests. Once again, the questing, landscape and the new zones, everything is really good. That's a really good part about Lotro. Unique endgame content. So this is one of the issues we're going to talk about. But people are generally pretty understanding about Lotro that typically we don't get everything at release, but it should be following pretty quickly after, in my opinion. But we'll talk about the end game later in the video. And the last thing is, of course, get more with collectors and ultimate fan bundles if you purchase the more expensive bundles. I also wanted to just look at the bundles real quick. I'm not going to go into depth, but obviously we get all the content, the base content that we just saw. There's the instance cluster for endgame, of course, the Mariner class, really good. And of course, if you go for the more expensive bundles like the collector's edition or the highly recommended ultimate fan bundle, then of course you get a bunch of extra stuff, typically usually in the form of pets and cosmetics. And yes, there are people who will buy the ultimate fan bundle because they love the game. They want all the stuff. They want all the pets. They collect the pets. They love the cosmetics. There is, of course, people who just buy the standard edition. They mainly want the content, the instance cluster, the class, and all the other stuff. But we're not going to really focus about all the extra fluff and everything. We're mainly going to focus on what we should expect from the content and the instance cluster. So if we scroll down and we look at the prices, obviously, if you pay extra, you basically pay for the cosmetics and the pets and all the other goodies. But everyone who buys this expansion they all pay $40. And if you pay real money for an expansion, you do have a minimum of an expectation of what an expansion should be. So that's what we're going to talk about moving forward. But let's start off with the positives of this expansion. So as we know, we got four new zones. We got the new Western Kings Gondor. We got Outer Kings Gondor. We also got the brand new Herodweth region adding the Shield Isles and Umbar, the Cape of Umbar. The downtime for the update was pretty quick, I would say, typically for an expansion. The questing, as always, is excellent. The story is great. Landscape looks great. The game always looks great. Pretty much any update they do where they add new landscape, where they add new quests and new epic stories, it's always the same story. Lotro does great on that part. And even though I personally haven't really gotten too far into the story as of yet, I have reached Outer Gondor on the character that I've quested the most on. My Guardian is getting close to that. And eventually I will get to experience the Shield Isles and Umbar. But I have talked to friends. I have seen feedback in Discord, on the forums. And generally people seem to have a blast questing through the Shield Isles and also questing in Umbar. So... So before we go focusing on anything that's negative, let's give them a lot of credit for the landscape as always. Landscape, quests, and story, always good with Lotro, and that goes for this expansion as well. Excellent job on the landscape, 
all the questing and the story. The problem is, however, that that's pretty much the only positive things I can say so far about this update. What is the expectation when you get a brand new expansion? What I just talked about, the quests, they're there, the quests are great. The story, the story is there, it's great. Landscape and new zones, they're there, they're great. No one's really complaining about the new zones, the questing or the story. There's been some people a little bit miffed about having to go through Gondor again, although it's Gondor renewed. But generally we have one reused zone, which is the Western King's Gondor. Outer Gondor is brand new. The Shield Isles are brand new and Umbar is brand new. So overall, I don't think we can really complain about that. And people in general are not really complaining about the landscape, the questing and the story. The problem though is what comes after that. Once you get to 150, once you finish all the quests on your character, what's next for your character in the beginning of an expansion? Okay, I want to get the best gear I can get before the instances arrive. What can I do? Where are my dailies? Where are my repeatables? And it seems to me that this expansion largely has failed in that regard. I want to compare it to the Gundabad expansion. So this is me on my hunter in Gundabad. Okay. As soon as you finish all the quests in Gundabad, or actually as soon as you reach level 140, you got a pop-up quest. Go to Gundabad, go to Didir Nesad where I am right now. Talk to this guy, talk to these guys and the guy inside, and you can finally start doing your dailies and your weeklies. So once you activated your dailies and your weeklies, let's see exactly what you could do with Gundabad. Let's start with Agatur. This is like the main dailies guy. He has the battle at the forge and the battle at the lofts. And these both have like five, six quests in them. There's like an instance area where you kill a bunch of stuff and you kill some bosses and you do some dailies. You can group with your friends. Really well done dailies, in my opinion. There's a reflection on Gundabad daily that you could do. If you wanted to replay an instance, you can get some rewards from that too. So let's try to keep count. Let's say that Battle at the Forge, Battle at the Lofts would be like, yeah, let's say they're one, two. Inside, I think there's four or five. Let's say five each, so 12. 13 with the reflection of Gundabad. Sadok Flintai has three instances which you could duo as well. Another good thing, good for grouping. And I believe inside each there were two or one side quest. Let's say two. So six, seven, eight, nine. That means we're at 22 quests for dailies. Brathy has landscape dailies. Searching for diamonds, gold, sapphires, treasures. The Stone Smasher is a daily, Mining for Crystal is a landscape daily. Most of these searching quests could also be done inside those daily instances. So 23 plus 6, we're at the 29. So 29 dailies just from getting to level 140. And I don't think anyone really complained about this. The dailies were being run. People wanted to get their reputation, their items, their rewards. And not just dailies. Let's go inside and look at the weeklies. So inside, if we talk to Sova, what do we have? We have your Reclaiming the Mountain Hold Weekly. So this is a weekly for doing the dailies that you could do every week. There's obviously the challenges and the raid. They came later when we got instances, but we already had a weekly as soon as we got to level 140, plus all the dailies, 29 dailies and a weekly. And on the left, we have the Allegiance people. You could also do the daily missions for the allegiances. So there were allegiance dailies and weeklies as well. In other words, beginning of X-Pack had no instances, but it had plenty of dailies and weeklies to work towards. So let's compare this to the dailies we have with Umbar on release. Looking at the Shield Isles, the first thing that you can do once you finish all the quests, there are four bounties you can do in the bottom of the Shield Isles, the bottom camp, what is the name? Bell Insul, you have a bounty board with four bounties you can do daily. Pick up those bounties, go kill some enemies, come back, hand in those bounties. This is one example of the bounties you can do. Defeat the Bell Insul Proto Beast, you can do this daily and get your reward. We look at the rewards, this is a good standard daily reward. Legendary item experience. You get some barter items, you get some allegiance reputation, 
you get greater morale and power potions. If you compare the normal morale potion to the greater potion, this is a really good incentive to do dailies, getting the stronger Athelos Essence. So a big positive here, incentives to do dailies, always good. You get a little bit of Virtue XP, and then you can choose one out of 20 embers, one enhancement rune yellow, one purple tracery, or the crate of crafting materials. So by doing this four times a day, you can get 80 embers, you can get four runes, you can get four traceries, or 40 of any crafting material. So I would say this is not too bad. I imagine a lot of people will pick the rune to increase their legendary items tracery levels. Or they might go for the crafting materials early in the expansion. Crafting materials are really valuable. But overall, I would say this is a good daily. I don't mind this at all. And I also like that they're using landscape to do dailies. The problem, however, is that it's only four quests compared to Gundabad's 29. And don't worry, it's not only four quests. There is a little bit more if we go to the Umbar zone. When you're doing all the quests, there's going to be two repeatables in Jack's Fanol. There will be two repeatables in Catab that you can do daily in order to help with your allegiances in Umbar. But that is literally it. I've heard some rumors about completing some deed by doing the dailies multiple times, giving you maybe a couple of more quests. But initially, what you have is two quests here, two quests here, and you have the four bounties those are your dailies. And although it gives your 150 characters something to do, when you spend money on an expansion, there are expectations to that expansion. And those expectations are higher than 8 dailies. You should always look at the previous expansion. Players are going to expect the same amount of dailies, the same level of dailies. And we have not got that with Umbar. The dailies and the 150 endgame content so far, really underwhelming for Lotro, and in my opinion, it's not enough for a big expansion. When you're doing a big expansion, you have to match the previous one. I'm not saying you have to do it better, but the minimum expectation is that it will be the same amount as your previous expansion. You shouldn't charge the same amount of money and deliver less content, because that will leave a sour taste in the mouth of the consumer. People who played the Gundabad expansion, they bought the expansion, they paid money, they got what they got, and that was pretty good. Those same people paid for this expansion as well. They were expecting to have the same amount of dailies at the end, but that is just not the case, and that is not a good thing for an expansion. If you don't have the same amount of content as your previous expansion, you should just hold off on the release Add more dailies, give at the minimum the same amount of rewards as your previous expansion. Don't give us 8 dailies compared to like 30 dailies from Gundabad. That's just not a good thing. Another problem is that there were also multiple other things added on top of the lack of dailies. One of them in my opinion is really bad. We got the expansion release in the middle of a reward track season. Meaning that if people held off on claiming all the rewards, you give a really unfair advantage to a lot of players who didn't claim the rewards yet. Just look at these rewards you can get early in an expansion. You go towards the end. Look at this. There's so many gold runes. There's yield tracery tokens. There's gold tokens. There's gold stuff. Like, like there's stuff that we should be getting towards the end of a level cap. This reward track was tuned for the end of the 140 cap. And instead, people who didn't buy the rewards can get this in the beginning of 150. And as we can see, the time remaining is one day. In one day and 12 hours, we're getting a new season of the reward track. And I'm assuming that season is tuned towards a new level cap. There's going to be like a lot of yellows and purples, not golds and teals. And another problem with the reward track not being new for a new expansion is that you can save all your coffers. You can open so many coffers, get so many rewards, another jumpstart to your legendary items. And basically what I'm missing here is like, where is the checklist? Where is your checklist for a next expansion? Okay, when we release our expansion, we're going to open a new season of the reward track. We're going to let the players know 
that the reward track season 7 will end early because the new expansion is coming on this day so make sure you claim your rewards season 8 of the legendary items reward track will release with the expansion or you time your expansion release with the reward track where is your checklist for things like this i'm also hearing reports that set bonuses like your heraldry set bonus once you upgrade to umbari tier they simply don't work or when you reach level 150 the old set bonuses don't work maybe they just like other set bonuses from raids and stuff have like a minimum level on them it's not being displayed on the item so how can people know i'm just wondering where is the checklist where is the quality control for the new legendary items level there's simply no reason we should be having these issues with the new cap. Everything should be ready and tested, but the problem is we're seeing a lot of issues instead. When it comes to crafting, we were promised a lot of things with crafting. Some of it didn't really go through, like you were not able to skip directly to Umbar, but that's a part of the coding in the game and people understand that, people accept that. But when you look at crafting itself, there's issues with the yellow armor, costing a lot of sea stones when it shouldn't. This was the case in an early beta for the expansion, and in a later beta, the sea stones were removed as far as I know. But instead of getting the latest beta build for the crafting, we instead reverted back to this build where the items cost way too much. Where is the quality control? Where is like the checklist for all this? People are told to hold off on crafting until they get a patch in, and hopefully we see that patch this week. They did talk about Wednesday probably being the patch and hopefully people can start doing their crafting. Some people probably already wasted the resources from crafting the really expensive items. People are also reporting quests not having quest rings above them. And it's not a good impression when the very first book quest I did when I picked up the book again after the expansion in Imloth Miller, there was no quest tracker for the initial quest where you're supposed to go east into the big building in the east. I did figure out the way myself, and I'm sure most players did, but it's not a good sign when the very first book quest does not have a quest tracker showing you where to go. The flame of Ankelamir has been disabled because of another issue, another thing that possibly could have been avoided with a checklist, making sure everything is working perfectly. If we look at our older items, they can be disenchanted into embers. That might be part of the reason why it is disabled. This could easily have been avoided with a checklist. Make sure all level 140 items can be turned into moats before we release the expansion. So it leaves me wondering where is the quality control? Where is the checklist? All of this has to be done before we release a new expansion. There's also reports of delvings not spawning the delving stones inside if you do them at 150. So basically you can't do delvings at level 150. There's also no gear dropping from delvings at 150. So why would you do them? Again, this is something that, in my opinion, should have been in with release. Delvings is another source of dailies you can do. You already have the delvings. All you have to do is make sure that the delvings drop a decent gear. Maybe not best in slot, but still they can give decent gear. Maybe on the level of crafted gear. But once again, we have a failed system on release that players could have spent a lot of time on. Some areas in King's Gondor give you the old crafting materials. Mainly what I've noticed was in the mountain areas of Belfalas, there was like Gundabad crafting items that you could harvest. Another thing that should not happen, there should be the new ore, the new wood. So once again, you do wonder how this happens, what went wrong there. There's also an issues with the new enhancement runes. Let's say that my Heraldry of the Sturdy Ox was at 498. Obviously, I would just need one yellow tracery to max it out to 499, but if I were to use the gold enhancement rune, which should enhance my tracery by four levels, if I were to use it with one level remaining, it would consume all four, consume the whole enhancement rune, and basically I would lose three levels. That's an issue that should be fixed, either returning you a teal enhancement rune, meaning that you only use one of the gold, or simply make you unable to do that, or have a barter with barter options of you to downgrading your gold into lesser enhancement runes. Another problem that could have been fixed with some testing and a checklist 
We can also take a look at the auction. Let's look for crafting and crafting recipes. We are missing tier 15. The brand new tier is not here. We're also missing tier 10 for some reason. Another thing that should be on a checklist to make sure the crafting tiers are in, in the auction as well. It's just piling up of small things that are missed, which shouldn't be missed if you just have a checklist and make sure the quality is there. Another bug that has been discovered as a minstrel if you reforge your items. Yes, the damage will say that the damage increased, but the damage on your skills are still the same as before. So another bug that shouldn't be happening but that appears to be happening. And another thing that has stopped working completely is the discovery of new instances. And how does that happen by releasing an expansion? I don't know, but that's another issue. So with all the negatives out of the way, what can be done to fix this? How can you make this better? And the obvious one is more content on release. Don't release an unfinished product that doesn't have enough content for players at level 150. If people are paying the same price for an expansion, they should at the minimum get the same content on release as the previous one. And that has clearly not been the case with Umbar. There's way less dailies, there's not even a weekly, there's way less content to do. Of course, we would like to get the three mans, the six men, and the raid as soon as possible, but that's always been a case with Lotro where people are okay to wait a bit. We don't mind waiting a couple of weeks for the three mans and then a few weeks more for the six man and a few weeks more for the raid. People don't mind that because they can run the three mans, they can run the six man, they can run the raids. But right now there's so little to do before the three mans and that's a big, big problem. With Gundabad it was fine because we had so much content to do. In addition to all the quests, like the quests in Umbar is good, the quests are fine, the story is good, the landscape looks great but we're missing content to do before the three months come out. We need more dailies. Everyone likes doing dailies. There needs to be more dailies. There needs to be incentives to do the dailies. There needs to be rewards to work towards. You should be able to grind dailies for a couple of weeks, two or three weeks, and then give you a really good item that can be useful for three months. And then you'd run the three months to keep doing the dailies there needs to be incentives to keep doing dailies, keep running the three man to gear up. We know there's a six man coming. Get your best gear, get ready for the six man. Once the six man is out, there needs to be an incentive to keep doing dailies, keep doing the three man, keep doing the six mans, and then finally we get the raid. We all know people will keep running the raid, but if you also keep the incentives for the dailies, like the improved morale pots is a really good one. There's a reason to also run three mans, the reason to run the six man, the reason to keep doing the raid, of course. Then you have content in a game for a level cap. There should always be a reason for people to log on, to play the game, to get better gear. We need more reasons to play. Making people pay money for an expansion and not giving people a reason to play is not a good thing. In a few months time, once we finally get the raid, I want the scenario to be like this. I want to be able to log on and I want to be able to say, okay, what do I need for my character in order to help my group with the raid? Oh, I should do some dailies because I get that from dailies that I need in the raid. Oh, I, I still need to do the three man to get that thing. That would be helpful in the raid. Oh, and I should get my friends and we should run the six man because I can get that thing, that thing. They will be good in the raid. I need to do the raid because I can get good things from the raid and if I do the other content a lot I'm better equipped for the raid that's how the thinking should be in my opinion and then once you have that it's a beautiful log on you have content to do that gives the developers time to make more content in the future new end game landscape zones new instances with improvements or different new gear that gives you a reason to do that as well meaning that you have what you already have, but you then have new content, you have reason to run more content. You need to make sure that the old content is still viable and useful to run, while also giving new content. I'm just missing a plan, like a thinking, and there are so many ways you can be creative and give content a reason to be run. 
there has been some rumbling about some people leaving the company, some of the developers. And obviously, if you lose people right before the expansion, it's going to be a rough time to deliver on the content. But I think most people would agree with me that we'd rather wait another month where we have all the dailies on release than getting an unfinished product. There's so many small bugs that could have been avoided with a checklist, with quality assurance. Just so many minor things that shouldn't happen. And I want to end the video by talking about something that's really lacking from SSG towards the community. And that is communication with the player base. I know as a company, they're not obliged to communicate with us, but it would just do wonders for the community and the game overall. Just let us know what is the plan. With a little bit of communication, the backlash that we are seeing right now could have been avoided. If people would have known beforehand, if SSG would simply release a statement saying, Hello everyone, hello players of Lotro, we are releasing the expansion on November 8th, but please keep in mind, not all the content is ready. We are giving you all the landscape, the landscape and the story and the quests are ready. But unfortunately, we didn't have time to add all of the endgame dailies yet. There are some dailies that you can start playing around with. But the rest of the dailies will arrive a few weeks later. You will also get missions a few weeks later. But we are releasing the expansion on November 8th. So people can get a start on the journey, the quest, the exploration and the story. We just need a communication. Let people know what they can expect so they don't get disappointed. Instead, what we're left with is the expectation of a lot of dailies just like Gundabad. Of course, we are expecting the same content as Gundabad. We pay the same amount, the prices are the same. They're both big expansions, level increase. People will expect the same amount of content as the previous expansion. If you can't deliver on that content, you need to communicate it. So communication with the player base is a thing that is severely lacking. Most weeks, we don't even know if we're going to get a beta for the new content. But instead, we could easily just get a message like, Oh, we're planning to do a beta on Tuesday. Stay tuned for more information. Just improving the communication would do so much good for the game. Typically, nowadays, we have Court of the Rings every Friday where we get some information. But other than that, the communication is really, really bad with the player base. We typically find out the night before whether there's an update or whatever next week and when it comes to this Corsairs of Umbar expansion if they would have simply communicated that we are getting the expansion expansion is releasing on November 8th we're not going to have all the endgame dailies there are eight repeatables that you can do a few weeks later early in December we will bring you the missions new missions it's going to be more dailies and then a few weeks later we are giving you the three mans a few weeks later, the six man, and a few weeks later, the raid. But instead, what we're getting is silence. They released the update. We don't really have any communication. On Court of the Rings, we get vague mentions of them planning to release missions in December. And when it comes to the three man instances, can't really say. We are hoping to get them out before January. We don't know. I think a lot of people would just prefer if they were transparent. They could simply say that the goal is for missions to be out in December and the goal is for three months in January. Instead, we are left unknowing. We just hope that we get content the next week. But in my opinion, a lot of this backlash could have been improved with better communication. So all in all, the release of the expansion has been great when it comes to the questing, the story and the new zones and all the landscape. That is always great in Lotro. But a big negative is not enough endgame content for a release of an expansion. People are fine with doing dailies, but there is simply not enough dailies to do compared to previous expansions. There's a lot of bugs in the game right now that feels like they should have been avoidable. And at least for me, it feels like the lack of communication is really frustrating. So all in all, I think there are good things with this expansion, but I also think the negatives outweigh the good which is not good for a release of a big major expansion the communication is also in my opinion not good enough and hopefully maybe someone from the company watches this video 
maybe in the future we get better communication. All I know is that overall, the Corsairs of Umbar has had a disappointing start. We all hope for better for the game. It is not all a doom and gloom. If we get the missions, if we get more dailies that are good, if we get really good 3 mans and 6 mans and a really good raid, that will definitely go a long way to fix the initial impression of Corsairs of Umbar. But when people spend the same amount of money for an expansion, they should be allowed to expect the minimum as the previous expansion that cost the same amount of money. And so far, the Corsairs of Umbar has not delivered in that department. I am typically someone who is really positive when it comes to things like this. But I think in this case, the Umbar expansion has really under-delivered. And I'm hoping for better things in the future. I know we all hope for better things in the future for Lotro. We want the game to stay around for years to come. But for that to be the case, we really need to avoid things like this happening in the future. Thank you for watching my video. If you enjoyed the video, please consider dropping a like and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. And if you like Lotro, I would really recommend joining my Discord servers. You can also support me directly through my Ko-fi website. If you're playing or looking to play Lord of the Rings online, there is one place you need to be. The Guiniverse is a Discord server created for the community of the players of Lord of the Rings Online. The server is getting close to 7,000 members, and in this server you'll find tons of helpful information. There's monthly giveaways, easy access to patch notes, you can keep up with my YouTube videos, my streams. If you're a streamer, you can ask for the streamer role, and you can announce your streams in the other stream channel. There are discussion channels for pretty much everything, every class, monster players, but the best thing about your server is probably the gearing resources tab, where you can find anything from trait lines for every class, every build. There are stat goals, where you can find out what stats you should aim for on your characters. Really helpful information about the drop rates from instances, as well as screenshot from all the new loot that appears in the game. If you enjoy Lotro, you should definitely consider joining this server, and hopefully I'll see you in Middle Earth. If you were part of the Guiniverse already, you might have noticed that another tab appeared at the top, the LFF server. This server is a brand new server that I created, the LFF Guiniverse. In this server, you can select which servers you want to keep up with. And once you select your server, say you select Arkenstone, you will see the LFF, the kinship advertisement, looking for kinship and trade channels. And there's also voice channels if people want to use those. The LFF channel is basically a looking for fellowship channel where people can post if they need players for the runs. And this way, people don't have to be logged into the game to see the chat. They can just instead get a notification on their Discord. There's also a kinship advertisement page where kins can post their kinship advertisement and have people join their kins. And you can also post in the looking for kinship chat if you're looking for a kinship. But make sure to take a look in the kinship advertisement first and look through all the kin to find a suitable kin for you. There's also a trade channel if people want to buy or sell stuff that you can use. Hopefully you'll consider joining this server to bring the community even more together, not just in the game, but also outside of the game.